Malcolm for a speaker, Mr. Olusegun Oyetunji. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a pleasure and a honor to stand before you today. Uh, I do not take it for granted. I can see a couple of friends, senior colleagues, you know, a couple of people I've not met in years, some of them over a decade ago. I can see the honorers in front as well. Um, when I was trying to move near technology people like them, 10 years ago in Yaba, I can never forget when I was still in telecoms then, but then you know how it is. You see people who have gone ahead of you in some field and you just try to learn as well. And learning is a constant thing as well. Uh, I also see CFA, I don't think it's around here, but there are a couple of people, and um, I mention these names because they are pivotal to some of the journey that some of us have had over the years. So I'll go straight into our presentation today. I won't take much of your time. Okay. I'll try not to bore you. All right, then. And um, I'm sure we'll be able to discuss a few things as well. Okay, so digital strategies to take your business to the next level. Uh, you know, it's interesting we're in 2018 right now as we speak, and it is amazing the kind of world that we live in today. In fact, a lot of things that we never thought possible are already being, you know, already happening right now. I remember, was it back in 2004 when I joined the telecoms industry? Uh, I was in the contact center actually, and I had a boss then, Mr. Plato, who used to tell us about, you know, how businesses will change in Nigeria, how they will set up a couple of stuff, you know, data, internet, how it will impact a lot of things along the line. And we're just, you know, we used to look at him then and say, hmm, in this Nigeria, and fast forward now, you know, a couple of years later on, a lot of the predictions he made have actually come through. True. Now, digital strategies to take your business to the next level. If we want to talk about um, strategies, there are a couple of things we can discuss. And, um, you know, businesses currently right now, the questions they're asking themselves at this point in time in Nigeria is, how do I make sense of what's happening out there? How do I make sense of all the technologies that are, you know, coming up daily in the kind of business that I do and my industry as well? How do I ensure that I'm not left behind? And there are a lot of things that we need to take note, especially for small businesses who do not have a lot of, you know, um, cash or the capacity like that to, you know, to pay for a lot of software or pay for technologies or hire a lot of people to be able to at least move forward and compete optimally in this kind of time that we live in. So it's very important that all these things are, you know, looked at as well. So Nigeria is, you know, it's, it's very funny because I see a lot of businesses daily. In the job that we do, we do a lot of training currently. And uh, I see a lot of businesses, especially small businesses. And one of the things that I get to discuss with them is I ask them, especially the ones that are still in the very traditional space. You know, when you go into some places, I have friends and, you know, family and different people that you meet as well. And you ask them, oh, why are you still running your business like this? Why are you still being analog, so to speak? What are the challenges you face? And a lot of them will tell you they don't understand what is actually going on there. Or some of them will just tell you, no, nothing. All this, your noise about digital, social media, all these things. You people are not serious. I'm making money currently right now. So they can't even see beyond their, you know, um, daily, daily work. And they can't even see beyond the revenue they are currently making at the point that they are making. But it's very important that businesses take note not just small businesses, but even large businesses, to understand that the world we live in now, you cannot ignore digital. You cannot. If you've been ignoring anything digital before, you cannot afford to do that at this point in time. Because if not, you will be the one losing out, and you will be the one you know, left behind. And this is very, very important for us to discuss as well. So we live in a digital world, as I've spoken about, and it's very important, like we said here, because it's important in, in the fact that New businesses are coming up. New models are coming up. You know, um, new technologies are disrupting the environment. So if you're in the insurance industry, for example, I think that's an industry that is ripe for disruption. Uh, you know, banking is already, we're already talking about fintech in Nigeria. And it's not only affecting all those big companies as well. Even for the small guys who make payments, you go into the marketplaces, you see so many people 
who tell you, oh, nowadays, I, I use Paystack. You know, some of them, you know, have websites. They have a lot of things, and it's very important. So it's making a huge impact on all organizations. Competition from new players and even things that people used to do before is already changing the status quo. So you have to really, really look at your business where you are today. Look at what you have achieved so far. Look at where you're going to. And you need to sit down and say, what do I have to do at least to take me to the next level? Now, the next level for you might be different from, so, from for some other people. So for some other people, they already have, you know, a sound business in terms of maybe things are going well for them, but they do not want to get into a situation whereby they would wake up one day and they just realize that somebody has moved their cheese. So they need to disrupt themselves and at the same time prepare for the upcoming years as well. So you have to invest in digital transformation moving ahead. Your processes, how are you going to check them? So if you are getting bigger, if you run a small business, maybe you started, you are the chief, uh, like Mr. Uh, Maduka said, he said he was the chief damaging officer, chief uh, executive officer, this and that. So if you started your business by yourself and you started running it and you started hiring people, and your business is growing, you should not just, you know, grow it the traditional way only. You should also think of infusing some digital elements into it. So technology would also help you to at least make sure that your processes are set well. So for example, now, uh, your finances, things you are going to talk about, you have to find a way to say, okay, fine, how do I automate my processes, my finance process, my social media strategy, my customer service, you know, hiring, everything you do, you have to find a way and an approach to think digital because it's actually the thinking and it's not just the technology itself. It's the approach that you think about, the way you think about it, that in the world that I live in now, if I don't think this way, uh, what would happen to my business in a few years' time? So these are things we need to look at as well. Of course, we've talked about um, the concerns and everything, so the strategy. So everything that you need to do, you will find that even though you live... Uh, your business is run in a certain part of Nigeria, for example, uh, we're in Lagos, and I was in Kaduna a few uh, days ago with some of my colleagues, and I realized that everybody is taking notice. Now, you know, Lagos, we're used to a lot of stuff. We, we get a lot of um, events like this that we go to. We understand a couple of things. We have a lot of people who are digital savvy. But when you start to move out of Lagos, you start to see other people in other areas who, who are also taking note and catching up. They are not sleeping at all. They are already thinking and rethinking their businesses. I think we met an Alaji in Kaduna who came for the training. He brought some of his boys. He said, okay, I don't understand a lot of these things you're doing, but I know I have to be here. And it was a training that we were doing. It was a Facebook uh, training. Uh, and he came with his guys. He not only came, he waited. And after they get, he started calling us to say, see, I know that I have to have online presence. I just have shops, I have businesses, but I want to start coming online. Not just online, I want to start taking advantage of anything that will make my business move forward. You could see that when we were talking to him, he didn't really understand some things, but he said, I brought some of my boys here. They will understand you better. And because they will understand you better, you have to be able to at least help me train them. So we're going to sit down again, and he's saying that again, that he's going to help us as he makes sure that we have to help him, make sure that at least within the next three months, He's going to come online at least first. And not just only come online, he has to set up his business in a way that he can also compete and, you know, get better moving forward. So these are some of the things we're doing. So you have to do these things well. If you run your digital strategy very well and um, the approach that you want to use to say, okay, fine, I want to transform myself, you have to look at things that will, you know, help you improve your operations and reduce costs. The returns on your investment that you make, because... That is part of the challenges small businesses also give, that I have a budget that is very lean. You're telling me to spend money on, say, advertising, and you say, tell me to spend money online. You tell me to buy this software. You tell me to, you know, install cloud um, computers, accounts, I mean, things like that, things that would help me, you know, move my business forward. And part of the things they look at it that it's a cost for them to be able to spend on anything digital or that will make their business move forward. But you see... If it's done very well and it's planned very well, and you look at it that whatever money I'm spending now or I'm using to set up now, you'll find out that at, on the long run, you'll be able to maximize your returns on the, any investment you make in your organization to move your business forward. And this is very critical that you just don't jump into it and start to buy 
technology or spend money on this. You need to sit down and look at your business holistically. What can we do? What can we do better with the resources we have such that when we spend it on anything, we can see that we will have maximum returns. And when we say spend, we are going to look at the things we are going to be spending money on and a couple of things that you know, are even free for them to be able to use as well. So let's look at productivity. If you have a business and you run it the traditional way, you know, you expect that some of your staff will come every day to work. You know, a couple of stuff that people do in Nigeria here, for example, old traditional businesses who are still finding it difficult to, you know, infuse digital into their business. So they expect that the employees have to come to the office every single day. And if they don't come to the office, that means they've not worked for that period. But why should that be the case in this time and age? Why? When you have tools such as, you know, Google Suite. So if I open my business on Monday and one of my colleagues is not around and we have to do something, maybe, you know, a document or something, why can't I just log in onto my computer and, you know, use a Google Doc, create whatever it is I want to create if it's a draft, and let my colleague who probably has a, an off day or any of your colleagues, you know, to also log into um, Google Suite from wherever they are and at the same time, we can work on this document together. So we're beginning to see situations whereby remote working, you know, and this would save transportation costs for that employee for coming for that period. Because what that means is that there are suits and options for that person to be able to work remotely. So why would you want to come to the office on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for us to get anything done, for us to achieve results, productivity? It's not enough for you to come to the office and stand and mark your attendance, but it's the results that we get at the end of the day that really, really matters. So there are a couple of tools and things that we can use to do this as well. I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with this as well. So your spreadsheets, use Google Sheets. We use this a lot in a lot of um, um, work that we do, and a lot of organizations, small businesses, some of these tools are free. Some of them are very, 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 very affordable for you to be able to use as well. You can collaborate. You can do a lot of stuff. You know, store your documents, Office 365. Keep your notes and a couple of other stuff as well. Communication projects and um, collaboration. So there are other digital tools. For example, Slack. I know a lot of developers and the technology people use Slack for communication. But then, even if you run a business that is not in the tech space or anything related like that, there are tools that you can use to be able to have video meetings, for example, Skype. So the boss is traveling somewhere and he has to have a Monday meeting, which is a tradition that you guys do. So that Monday meeting, because he has traveled, what would happen and he wants to be in that meeting? We expect that at least you can use Skype or use other options to be able to have that meeting, you know, digital tools that you can have and say, okay, fine, let's have a face-to-face -face meeting. The fact that I'm on the other side of town does not mean that we can't have this meeting. And these are things that you would have embedded deliberately because there has to be a culture for people to get used to these things. And one of the things that we see that old businesses do is that they are afraid of changing or adapting new technologies to you know, run their business. And they're always scared, oh, this will happen to me, that will happen to me. But you see, these things are very, very important. They make you nimble and faster, and you can take decisions quicker. You know, a couple of other options, Trello, project management, and a couple, these are just examples of things you can use. Meaning that you don't have to hire a lot of people. So for example, now, if there are tasks that people will do, and you think that you can all collaborate on a project that you're working on, on a new project or whatever you're doing, you don't have to hire a lot of people to get everything done, to get something else done. When you have people, if you outsource projects to them, you can collaborate and you can give them access to your you know, um, documents and things that you can work with. So if you have consultants you want to work with that you can hire, you can also collaborate with them. Accounting, you know, a couple of other stuff as well. So there's a company called Accounting Hub uh, run by a lady in Nigeria. Um, I think I've forgotten her name now, but she's doing a lot of stuff and she calls what she does as virtual accounting. And we know that for businesses, if you want to take your business to the, to the next level, if, for example, you do not have records, how do you want to say that you are making a profit or not? How do you even measure some you know, things in terms of your revenue? And I'm sure a lot of businesses are guilty. A lot of people are in tie and suits. But if you ask them for their business records of the organization, they don't have it or they have it written somewhere in one paper and, you know, keeping records. Stop. A lot of people outside there. If you go to Alaba market or all those major markets, you find that people, the way they keep their records, yes, they do have an idea, but they can do better with what they're doing. So Invoice NG is there for reports, you know, pay stack, payments. And a lot of us, I'm sure we must have heard of pay stack. So 
it's easier for you to also receive payments. Nowadays, you don't have to wait physically for your customers to pay. You integrate this on your website or even on other things you want to do, on even some of your digital assets as well. A way of accounting is there. And Accounting Hub, like I said, even provides virtual accountants for people that want to have their records done and all that. So you just go on our website, you look at what she does, speak to her about a couple of things, and before you know it, they use these tools to be able to at least hire accountants who don't have to be physically present in your business for them to see your records and give you financial records as long as you keep them well. But these are simple, simple tools that you can use as well. Customer service, all-round processes, Zendesk, Freshdesk, live chat. Your customer service is also important because if you're going to go online and you're going to grow your business, it's very important that you take care of all these other processes first. Because one other thing, because we're going to talk about um, the marketing part as well. We see businesses who just go straight into marketing and sales and say, ah, I want to increase my, I want to sell my products. I want to sell this number of products. I want to generate this number of revenue. Now they start to do a lot of marketing, but their back-end processes are going to fail if they've not taken care of all those parts as well. So they just realize, that, okay, I'm going to spend money on marketing. I'm going to hire people or I'm going to do this or spend money on advertising, go all out. What of the other processes as well? How are you automating them? especially in this digital world that we are. Because even your customers are going to be, you know, coming with a digital-first approach on how you meet them and how you interact with them. So you have a chat, you know, uh, uh, a chat option on your website, for example. Or people come into your, interact with your business, depending on the level of the business you have and the type of business, and maybe you have a consumer-facing business. People can also, you know, get into your organization, as in have interactions with you through other options. So Zendesk, for example, now can give you a contact center option where you can have, you know, tickets of inquiries, not just emails that people can. When they, those come, you know, as tickets that you can check how long these things have been attended to. You know, a couple of other options whereby, you know, the t interactions where customers can come and at least interact with your business, all the touch points there. You can also set up some stuff for them to be able to at least have that access to your organization, you know, in such a way that you can see and you can also understand how they try to interact with you. Because it's very important that the decision making you're going to be making, you're not just going to be making it off the top of your head, but you have data of how many people have contacted you in the month, for example. What did they inquire about? What exactly, what feedback did they give? You know, before you make your next decision, which particular product did they talk about most? You know, things like that that you need to keep information about. What did they complain about? So that when you're going to make your decision, it's going to be a data, you know, driven decision. It's not just going to be a decision of the top of it, but it's going to be data-driven as well. Very, very important. And digital marketing is a lot of things now because we're going into marketing part. I know a lot of companies now talk about digital marketing. Everybody is, you know, up and down about digital marketing and all that. But it's very important that if you're going to take your business to the next level, you take care of the other processes first. Once you're sorted out with all those processes, you're sure that at least you have done some basic things right, then you can now start to make a lot of, you know, um, noise, a lot of awareness about your business and all that. So it's very important that you consider these things. And the marketing part, I can tell you, this is 2018, is very interesting. Of course, we won't dwell much on this because I'm just going to go straight to the fact that beyond what, uh, what you do, your email marketing, you know, having any other options you want to do, social is very important. The need for businesses to go social is very, 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 very important. And, and we can't, you know, this is without saying, for example, now, if we look at on Facebook, we have over 2 billion monthly active people on Facebook. At least in Nigeria, we have, I think, the last that we're looking at in 2017, over 25, 24, 25, 26 million people active monthly. Imagine, that's an opportunity, and a lot of them are on mobile. So it's very important that whatever strategies you do, you have to go and incorporate where, you know, the, the, the technologies, you have to go where your customers would most likely be, and you have to put that approach in your business. You cannot say it's enough for me to say, no, what are they doing on Facebook? What are they doing on Twitter? What's going on on Instagram? No, are they just playing there? Sit down, try to understand the platform, or get people who can help you understand the platform. Create an, a presence at least, if not anything, then start to think of how you can move your business forward. Because these are platforms that would help you grow your business exponentially. Very, very, very important. So take WhatsApp, for example, now. A colleague of mine was in Kano a few days ago. And um, she was just talking to some of the traders, you know, who were selling 
clothes and a couple of other things and even food items and kilishi and the rest. And they were saying, ah, madam, we use WhatsApp a lot. You came from Lagos. Why don't you take my WhatsApp number? When you go to Lagos, if you want to buy more fabrics, uh, I'll just send the picture to you and you just tell me the one you want and you'll find a way to pay me. Is that fine? You know, and these are traders in the market who barely even understand English. But they can communicate at least using that particular medium. And these are things that we need to think about. This WhatsApp business as well. So all these things are very, very, very important that we consider that. And I'm going to share one or two stories just before I round up for my colleagues to also come in. Okay? All right. And so one of the things we're going to look at very simply is uh, 2017, about 2017 November, um, about, yeah, 2017 November. But before then, there had been discussions. So I went for an event somewhere in Ikeja. And I met a couple of people, and it turns out that, okay, I saw people who came in from South Africa who were teaching. It was, it was um, I think it was, I can't remember, it was a training that was organized by another company, but I got invited. And I was networking with a couple of people, and we got talking. Fast forward to November 2017, the company that we run, which is still very young, uh, DJ360, we became a Facebook um, partner. And we became a partner on the Boost Your Business program. And the Boost Your Business program is a program that we are currently running, along with other organizations as well, not just ours. And this program has given us the opportunity to travel far and wide in Nigeria. Now, not just travel, but to also see businesses and see what they do. The Boost Your Business program is very, 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 very important. Important to our space because what we see is that we might think that there are a lot of businesses out there who understand what's going on who probably, you know, uh, understand that it's a digital um, op opportunity. But you see, you find out that they still need help. Thank you so much, sir. Can we give a round of applause for Mr. Oyetunji? I kindly invite you to have your seat, sir, as we call on the other panelists. And we have more to come. So we have three panel speakers that are coming up. Let me just quickly introduce them as they come up. We have Ayodeji Agbola who runs an internet marketing, marketing firm, Silver White Studios, and is the founder of at downloads.com.ng, an African digital content platform. He has successfully run digital marketing campaigns for both small and large organizations, such as Lagos Business School, Balance Scoreboard West Africa Limited, HP Nigeria, and Samsung Electronics West Africa. He is also a certified trainer on the Boost Your Business with Facebook training program by Facebook, on which he has trained over 1,000 businesses, business owners on how to use Facebook, Instagram, and other Facebook tools for business. Can we please give him a round of applause as he comes on stage? I would also like to introduce Mrs. Miss Padebi Ojomo. She's a writer, serial entrepreneur, sales and relationship marketing expert. As a multi-passionate entrepreneur with 17 years of business experience in helping women with small businesses get out, of their, get out on their own and build an empire that fuels their dream lifestyle. She is the founder of Purple Signature Limited, Chick Carpenter Limited, Business Savvy Chick Academy, and Cashmere Stores. She is also a certified training consultant with Digivate 360 on Facebook, Boost Your Business Program for, M for SMA, SME. Excuse me. <laughs> Can we please give her a round of applause as she comes on stage? You're welcome. Our last but not least um, panel speaker is Miss Yemisi Alabi. She is a brand and creative expert. She is the founder of Differently Consults, a creative intelligence agency that leverages the tools of creative media, technology, and digital strategies to help SME, SME, I don't know why this word is, SMEs, I'm so sorry, guys, strategically position their businesses to capture market share. Her goal is to help entrepreneurs understand their core values and develop gro a growth mindset, which will strategically propel their businesses to achieve goals, even goals even they consider audacious. Yemi C is also a certified tr trainer at Digivate 360 Boost Your Business with Facebook programs for SMEs. Please, can we give her a round of applause? Thank you so much. So, our moderator is Mr. Chinedu Abilimodi. He is a design thinker and strategic innovator. 
Chinedu is currently leading a startup that is positioned to become Africa's largest audio content on demand platform. His background has been in building capacity for over 12 years in marketing technology and media solutions, working with various teams and organizations across board. Chinedu was recently the COO of the pioneering digital agency Hot Source. Can we please welcome Mr. Chinedu Abilimordi? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so quickly, before we um, start, I just was told you guys have to write your questions down on, on the post-it notes that you have, and then share so that we could um, address the questions as we move in on the session. But you know, quickly, nice to have you guys on the panel. Um, excitingly, uh, as well, you know, we're, we're all in the same industry, and so it, sometimes it can be very, um, if, if without um, picking the wrong word, it can be very um, isolating to have us all talk about all the buzzwords and the rest and leave people out of those things. But I would like us to simplify some things in terms of what people can take away for their own individual businesses. And the way I like to sum it up uh, is that uh, for digital, one of the key things that I think some of the things we can relate with uh, um, I divide them into three majorly, which are data, mobile, and platforms. Um, for mobile, I don't think I talk about your mobile phones, but the fact that, that mobility, you can be any, anywhere and still access your business information and the rest. And then platforms that we all hear about, Facebook, Instagram, you know, but there are so many, Slack, all these things are all platforms that allow you to do things. So what I want you guys to help with, um, you know, so I just kick that off then. We'll take the questions as we move in. Is uh, from your own experience, okay? Um, and I'll, I'll just share one after the other. So I'll start with you for data, for example. Um, for your own experience, what have you been able to um, do with data for businesses? And just highlight something very critical. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, I wish you started with the ladies, uh, because obviously, ladies first. Um, but since you've passed it to me, so I'll just go, go ahead. What have we been able to do with data? Um, I've used the example of the Boost Your Business training that we've been on. This training started uh, March of this year, and up till date, we've trained about 15,000 business owners across about 12 cities, right? What we've seen, uh, what I have experienced, and what we've seen is that the biggest challenge for businesses is that they are either afraid of change or they, they are afraid to just take the steps, I mean, the things that they've been taught in class. So you see a situation where people are sitting in class, they are wowed by the content, but post-class, there is not in, enough uptake because there's a lot of free content by Facebook that allows you to actually go and learn about the platforms on your own and you know, use the learning points for your business. And we've been trying to measure this across all the trainings we've been doing. And that has been able to let us know that we have about, say, 10% to 12% uh, improvement in the businesses that we've trained. Because that's important to track. I mean, you're training people, you want to be able to see what's the progression of how uh, this is going. Because you can use that to then measure, right? Secondly, is that the businesses who now see that, okay, if I want to take my business to the next level, there are certain things I must do differently. And one of those is keeping record. Unfortunately, African businesses, Nigerian businesses are terrible at keeping records. You know, so the company cannot tell you how, many, how much sales they made last year. They cannot tell you how much sales they made three months ago. They cannot compare, you know, month on month, how the sales is going. So data, I think, is very, very important. Okay, so thank you. You know, just to take out, you know, measurements, tracking, record keeping, this is very, very important with what digital does with data. So without, um, you know, stretching so forward again, let's move into mobile. Yeah, mobile, mobile. mobile. So mobility access anywhere, anytime, you know, what have you seen 
with your own experience, how digital has helped with businesses being mobile. You know, somebody said, like he mentioned, you know, how you can actually be at home and basically calling with a Skype call. And what's the culture of mobility from what you're seeing and how has digital helped with that? So, so I think mobility has helped a lot in helping small businesses gain visibility. I'll come from that perspective. Because a lot of businesses um, now know that they don't have to be physically present in the faces of their market to actually... Okay. A lot of businesses have seen that they don't have to be you know, physically present in the faces of their target audience to make sales. They are using, they're leveraging the tools of Facebook, um, Instagram, you know, a lot of all these platforms to put their marketing message in the faces of the people that really need, you know, their products. And um, the beauty of Facebook and um, Instagram and WhatsApp is that, you know, they give, they give us data, they give us access into... They give us access into raw data, valuable raw data that is unadulterated. So with that data, you can actually see your con the consumer behavior of the target market you intend to sell your product to, especially if you have a business page on either Facebook or Instagram. With that data, you can project. In addition, you know, um, current statistics tells us that about 100 million hours worth of video content is viewed on Instagram daily. So that, and, and, and about 75% um, 75 of that statistic is viewed on mobile. So that tells me that the average mobile consumer consumes most of the social data on their mobile device. So right now, content curators and digital marketing experts know that and are curating content in such a way that it is mobile adaptable. It's mobile friendly. People can engage with it and people can get the best of it. And, you know, um, you know, posting content is great. But posting content on your mobile that doesn't convert is not so great. That's what I call vanity metrics. So you have um, 50,000 followers. How many of them actually need your product? How many of them, how many of the 50,000 followers actually convert into paying customers? So beyond being um, visible on mobile, it's important not to get carried away with vanity metrics. Uh, but um, position your business in such leveraging the raw data Facebook and Instagram provides to position your business in the faces of people that actually need your products because a lot of them are spending close to 80% of their time on mobile. So we'll just, uh, we don't have the feedback. Um, so I hear you, you just take away as well. So at mobile, it's really about the access, you know, and, you know, the access to content and people being able to access your business and the information and all those things that essentially would, um, you have to put out there for people to know more about your business. I think there's one more. Okay. Um, so the last one, you know, just show you out to, oh, no, this is not MC. Padibi. Padibi. I'm sure they mix up your name sometimes. Padibi. Okay, so um, for the last, um, just so that we now dive into the questions, platforms. So many platforms. So many platforms. You know, Facebook, Twitter, the Instagrams. Um, from your experience, right, um, I, today they say Facebook is the number one, you know, in terms of numbers and the rest. But maybe do you want to hint on maybe one or two platforms that you think businesses can leverage on? Maybe if you need to the next year, so we have 2019 now, you need to start planning. What do you want to invest in that you see that, um, apart from um, Facebook for businesses, I know we're here for most Facebook, but can you hint on Instagram, you know, and tell us a little bit more about the power of Instagram? Okay. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will say Facebook and Instagram. Now, of course, we have other professional platforms like LinkedIn, Twitter, but if, for example, maybe you produce shoes, you most likely will not find your customers on LinkedIn. So um, for product-based businesses, Facebook and Instagram are the platforms you want to focus on, especially for people that do not have 
physical offices or physical stores, there are quite a bit of people these days that they run their entire business from home or from the trunk of their car, as the case may be. All they do is get pictures and post it on Instagram and Facebook. As a matter of fact, some, some of them don't even stock these goods. I actually have a woman in my community and she sells gift essentials souvenirs, um, blenders, toasters, you know, regular household stuff. She posts the picture on Instagram or Facebook. When she gets an order, she calls her supplier in Eco. She call, gets a lab barrel, pick it up, take it to DHL, wrap it. And that is entirely how she runs her business. And she does six figures every month. You know, oh yeah. I actually have some other person I know that sold, did a transaction of 880,000 in a day. She doesn't have a store. So literally, it's on how you can um, take advantage of these platforms. All platforms are good. In marketing, we do lots of testing. We cannot say, okay, go here or go there. You may want to try different platforms. Find what works for your business. Marketing is all about testing. It's all about using the data that you have to figure out what is working and then scale. If Instagram is working for you, skill. If Facebook is working for you, skill. If it's YouTube, skill. Whatever platform works where your customer is because it's all about the customer. It's not about you. You wouldn't use your product. So if you know, okay, my customers are on Facebook and I do not know how to use Facebook, learn it. Thank you. Okay, so we'll dive quickly into the questions. Anybody can take the answers. Um, so the first one I have here, is there a way to protect your content from copyright copycats and plagiarism when you go online. So very <laughs> copycats, the ideas. No. Unless, of course, you are Michael Jackson or you are registered under the copyright law, local or international. If I post a picture of my cat or my dog, there is no way I can copyright that picture on social media. These days, you can actually copyright hashtags you can patent, for example, if I decide to use my name as a hashtag or the name of my community, maybe the GV360, I can patent it and make sure only people in my community use it. But then, why do I want to go and patent, spend money to patent a hashtag that, you know, so it depends. No, so for content, no. Unless, of course, it's music that belongs to a particular, but honorary content, no, you can't. Um, I prefer to look at it uh, from... From, from, from two perspectives. Um, the fact that they're copying your content means that, number one, you're creative, your content is good. Um, you find them copying your content, naturally they should attribute the content to you. If they don't, you ask them to. If they don't, you tell them to take it down. If they don't, you can report their social media handle because it's your intellectual property. And Intellectual property, even though it's not tangible, is your property. So anybody who uses your content without your consent or without actually attributing the content to you, you can actually tell them to take it down. So it's just so that you understand uh, the, con the, the context. You know, content that is yours, if they're copying it, that's a good sign that you have something good. So let me, let me quickly just take the next questions and then we have to quickly move. So I think, Shagun, you might answer this one. It's a very, it's a hard one. How do you identify the genuine marketing consultant to help scale your business? <laughs> this one, it says, it seems a lot of them are out to make money. I don't know. Business is about making money. And this guy, we all need to make money also. But I think the question is more about um, the quacks. Um, I, that's why you want to try you because also you, from experience you tend to go into some places and they say oh my cousin just left and he's a Facebook yeah, whatever so how do you weave through that interesting yeah. wow okay well I'll take it from this angle as well the same way you need to identify any professional actually in any industry uh, because beyond um, the digital marketing industry that we're talking about there are quacks in other industries as well so accountants who are not really, you know, good, half-baked ones, and a couple of other people who claim to be experts in so many things. Uh, maybe what I would say is, is in the results, you need to find a way to test them first. So if you need to probably hire anyone for a service, 
and you are pressed for time and for budget and they are coming to you to say this is it. So if it's something you can start at the minimal level with, test them with something that you know you cannot, um, you can afford to lose. So give them a simple task to do. See how they can do this. Because, you know, truth of the matter is a dynamic industry. So people might be good in some areas and not. And because of the fact that they need revenue, they want to make money. So they tend to say, okay, I can do that as well. I can do those other things as well and all that. So you need to check in terms of if you can test them with something small first to start with. Then other than that, results and results and results matter. Because um, I'll say this, we live in, a, in an age whereby people will say this because there's an argument out there. The number of years of experience you're using to do something, especially in the marketing. Yes, while that is important, but we're in 2018, and I'm talking about, you know, global, there are companies that probably in years, like Gary Vaynerchuk will say, and a couple of people, because these guys go out and test things, they can do some things better than some people who have been there for long. So for you to identify somebody who is good, you need to find a way to check their results, verifiable results, something they've done for someone before, and you can verify that what they did, they actually did what they claimed to do. So that's the best way I can put it, because when, you know, in times whereby you need to check people's digital track records as well. So if there's a way you can give them a small task to do, fine, test, then you scale with them. But if not, you have to find a way to verify. So the way you verify other professionals in other places, is there, because there are a lot of people out there that are there to scam people and claim that they are this and that. So please do not lose your hard-earned money. We get this a lot. So it's about the results. You ask them what they've done, and definitely you can see the Yes, you can see some of those things. Okay. Yeah. So let me see. I'll throw this at you. As an entrepreneur with a small growing business, how do you, how do I, for example, manage the time required to manage an active presence on social media? Okay. So, um, <laughs> yes. So most so of the people want to run these things by themselves. By themselves. Why can't you just hire someone? <laughs> No, but if you must do it yourself, you know, there are tools you can use to schedule posts. Facebook has a tool that, can you, on Facebook platform, if, you're, if you have a business page on Facebook, you can actually schedule your posts for the week. So a typical Sunday evening when you're resting or you're about to watch ball, you know, the thing is content creation is a strategic process. You're not just churning out content because everybody's posting content. No, you want to put content that... Is, is, is needed by the consumer of the content. So you have to strategically think of it. Everybody puts motivation quotes on Mondays. That's okay. But if you want to be different, for instance, what can you put in relation to your business that I don't, might be motivation or not? And then post it. So it's a strategic thought process. So you write it down. This is what I want to put. This is what I want to put. This is what I want to put. And you can curate that content, you know, and then post it, schedule it and post it over a period of time. And um, there are other third-party apps that can do that as well. You just do research, find out other third-party apps that can do that. You schedule your post, and then, you know, over a period of a week or two, it's just, it's just been um, loaded online. Okay. Okay, add to it. Okay, so in terms of um, creating time, think about it like you want, you have, maybe you sell shoes and clothes, and you have a store. Do you have time to actually go to open your store and sit there from, say, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day? If the answer is yes, then you should take social media as seriously if you want to use that platform to, sell, to grow your business. So classic example, ideally, you post three times a day on Instagram or Facebook. You should think about it in advance. That, okay, for every post I want to make or every content I want to create, what errand or what do I want this particular post to accomplish? Now, what I like to recommend to people, to small business owners like yourself, is to decide, say, okay, I want to sell 20 pieces of this shoe this week. So you have a goal. You know exactly what you are aiming to get. So you now create content and post it accordingly. And the easiest way to actually create content is to create it in batches. I wouldn't recommend you create content every day. It is lots of work. Sometimes you don't even have it. internet data is a mess. You know, especially now that we're in raining season. So you could decide maybe Sunday evenings or maybe once wake up early one morning, 3 a.m., batch create content for the next five days and then schedule it vis-a-vis -vis that goal of selling whatever it is you want to sell, you know, at the back of your mind. You now create content blocks around that goal and then you can now follow up. Now, do not forget that it's not just about posting. 
You also need to follow up with people that make comments on your posts, send some DMs. You know, you need to do some socializing on social media as well. Network with people also on social media. So posting actually is the easiest part. The follow up, and because your sale is not a process, you know, you, I mean, somebody may just like a comment. You need to follow up on the DMs, and person may not buy immediately. So your follow up game also has to be really strong. Just briefly as well, because I know that um, businesses who sometimes they always like to have some examples. So your mobile phone, like we've been talking about, this is a major tool that can save you time. So you have apps that can help you do a lot of stuff. So for people that create graphical content, for example, Canva has a mobile app option as well. For managing your Facebook pages, you can download the page manager. You know, just simple, simple tools that you can do. Go to the Play Store, maybe on Google if you use Android. Check and label these apps, productivity tools or social tools or things that can help you as well. And don't think that, okay, until I buy a major, big, you know, and, uh, a MacBook or, you know, something very expensive and hire something before you can do it. No. Like she said, you have to think about it, but you're also on the go. So if you have a mobile phone, very, very important. They can do a lot much more nowadays. Do not underestimate the power of your smartphones. Get a good one. Wherever you are, you can easily save time and do a lot of stuff. So what I'll do is I'll quickly I'll try to batch the questions into two, and then I'll push them out. I think uh, DJ will be perfect for this one. <laughs> so somebody asks, to get visibility for my business, do I have to buy followers on social media platforms? My favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> and if no, what are the strategies for to gain visibility? That's one question. Then they now okay. brought in a political, interesting question. So, says, with the recent issues, how does one trust information from the digital platform? So two questions in one. Okay. All right, so I'll take the first question first. Um, like Yemisi mentioned, vanity metrics. Okay, so you have 50,000 followers. Are you making money? Because in reality, you're in business to do what? Make money. So unless, of course, you're in business to have followers, then that's fine, right? So a lot of people will come to you on Instagram and say, ah, we'll give you 10,000 followers for 5,000 naira. If you go their way, you will get followers. But those followers don't know they're following you. Yes, they don't know they're following you. So your followers are not loyal. So they don't know that they're following you. So you can't sell anything to them. What do you have? Vanity metrics. It's better that you have 500 followers who you grew organically, who you post something, 10% of them will buy. Than you have 50,000 followers, you post something, none of them like your post. So, it's very important that you understand that business will grow naturally. Even though technology will aid it, there's still a natural process that business usually follows. So you don't go buying followers, you don't go buying likes. All of those things are vanity metrics. So it's very clear that it's a wrong approach. It's the same thing when you, people come and tell you, we'll sell you this email list. This email list, you know, it converts like crazy. Hello, they don't know you. How many times have you bought from an email that you got? Very few times, right? So you need to understand that you need to grow your tribe. You need to grow the people who are going to be loyal to your business. And how, do you, how you do that is very targeted at being able to, to show that you actually care for your customers. It's not just about money. You care about the solution that you're giving to them. And that's going to show in how you post and, and in how you conduct your business. And once that is there, word of mouth takes over. They tell people, these guys, go to them. They have the best services. And if you're not caring about your customers, the same thing goes around. Word of mouth. Even people who have not dealt with you say, don't go to those guys, though. <laughs> right? So I think that's very clear. Um, you don't buy vanity metrics. They don't help you. Then touch on the US election. For... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what was the question again? <laughs> How do you trust? Yeah, it's not basically about fraud, basically. So about fake news. Fake news. Yes, basically. I know uh, because I've, I've kind of caught wind of, of it that um, it's now going to be a punishable offense or something like that, that you post fake news, you can get uh, prosecuted or something like that. But 
if you look at the apps that we all have today, for instance, WhatsApp introduced a feature. When, me when a message is forwarded and it's not from you, you see it saying forwarded. So it's to protect you because actually you yourself, you bear responsibility for whatever message you pass across. And it's not enough to say forwarded as received. It's not. If it's not true, you have no business sharing it. Whatever you get, you need to verify first of all before you send it out because you become the point of reference for sharing that information. And WhatsApp is trying its best to actually protect you by showing that, okay, this message originally did not originate from you. So that's the first thing. Uh, secondly is, I mean, it's just basically you, you, you should use some, for instance, I, I use uh, a tool called Google Alerts. Google Alerts is a very interesting productivity tool. I can put in any, con any phrase. For instance, I put in my name in Google Alerts. Anytime anybody anywhere in the world posts up a content on the internet that has my name in it, I get an email about that. So I can know, okay, what's happening? Who, who are they talking about? Is this my own IOD Jagbola? Right? You can put up anything that is interesting that's in, interesting to you. It could be about your industry, it could be about your competitors, any information you want to have first hand information about. Google Alerts allows you to do that. You can check out Google Alerts. It helps you know what's happening in the industry so that somebody cannot post something to you and say this is what's happening. You already had that information. So, okay. Thank I mean, you. Um, so, yeah, Missy, I think this will be perfect for you. Two questions as well. Can you, the person asks, can you talk on LinkedIn and what is it used for? Can you talk on LinkedIn? How do you leverage on it? So, I think basically what the person is trying to uh, is what kind of content should I put on LinkedIn? Yeah. And so, so, and then, if I'm not mistaken, so the person says, can you talk on LinkedIn and what is it used for? So, we can get an idea, can you communicate? And then second question is now, how can we use digital to test a Marvel concept effectively, like an interesting concept, a new concept effectively? Okay. So LinkedIn is a, is a platform for professionals. And so I, I strongly recommend LinkedIn for working professionals in the formal sector, consultants, um, service businesses and all those kind of businesses. So if you're in that kind of business, LinkedIn is your tool to make your voice heard and known and seen. So, but if you're in the business of selling shoes or selling perfumes, I mean, LinkedIn is not the platform for you. You understand? So um, I guess that answers the first one. Then the second one is... Okay, testing a new concept. You never know until you try. That's the truth. You never know until you try. There's no hard and fast rule to these things. I test. He tests. If it doesn't work, we go another route. You have to put it out there, but be sure that the content you're putting out there is in the face of the audience that needs it. And so when you have a product, you're asking yourself, who needs this product? Even before you step into all those platforms, you're asking yourself as the business owner, who needs this product? Who are the people connected to the people that need these products that have the potential to purchase it? purchase it as well. And all that information is available via the data on um, Facebook. There's something called audience insights on Facebook. When you get back, you can just look at it. It gives you raw data. So for instance, on audience insights, let's assume I'm a bag manufacturer and I need to source leather from Kanu. I can go on audience insights and just check interest. I'll put, I'll put leather. Age. I might not put an age restriction because age is not really what I'm looking for. I just need leather from Kano. I'll put location, Kano, and just test to see if the people that I can source from are online. If they're not online, you know, I think of another way to reach those people because remember, I'm in quotes, a bag maker that wants to source from le for leather from those people. So it's about your product, what you want to achieve, and then testing it with the target audience and then seeing if it works. And if it doesn't work, you try again. I think that's yeah, the best answer. Are you okay quickly? Um, it seems to me that that question is, is targeted at um, somebody who's trying to launch maybe a new idea or, or something. Um, what I'd like to say is sometimes we fall into the trap of take, taking about, talking about digital and not realizing that our businesses can still be offline even though it has a digital presence. And what I mean by that is you want to put this thing out there, the first thing is to do a test. T 
take your first 20 people, give them your product, whatever it is. Maybe it's an app or it's a website or whatever it is. Give it to them and see how they use it. What's their feedback? Because you're in business for the customers. Whatever they tell you, the feedback is, that's what you need to do. You know, because if you're, if you're able to create something, I mean, for instance, take a, take a look at WhatsApp. Every day now, we have one billion monthly active users on WhatsApp. But it didn't get there by magic. The first iteration of WhatsApp was, hey, guys, try this, 100 people. And then 100 people liked it, they gave their, their feedback, they shared it to another 200 people, and it is the iteration of that that became what you now have as WhatsApp. So we must also do offline and complement it with digital. I think that's very important to stress. Um, Padebi. Padebi. Where are you from, sorry? Bielsa. <laughs> Bielsa. <laughs> I have never heard that name before. But first time, okay. So I think this one also, um, this person still stressed about staffing. So it's two in one as well. So I batch them together. So it says, as a MSME, which is a micro, small, medium enterprise, I have found it hard to hire good hands for digital content creation, affordable and good data. So I think the person is trying to have an idea of tips on hiring. It's funny how I'm answering HR questions here, but hey. <laughs> and then second is, how does one ensure that staff don't abuse the flexible slash virtual office working space option? So I guess when you hire that person, how does this person... Okay, so I'm going to take the first one first. Yeah. In terms of content creation, I wouldn't recommend you outsource your content creation. Even if you're going to get virtual assistants to manage your content or manage your pages, your business, you are the brand, you are the business, you are the face of the business. Usually, people buy from you because of you. And we all have our peculiarities. I have my own Gregor, my own Squire Squire, I post on social media. I wouldn't sound like GMC. So if I have a, an assistant that is posting for me, the tone of that brand, the tone of that message will not be consistent. So as much as possible, try and create your content by yourself. You can batch create, then tell the person about posting for you. Now, there are people that actually create content for people. So here's what I recommend. Create your content either on paper or use any of the Google apps, maybe um, Google Doc, and then you cannot have somebody create a graphic if you don't have the time to create it. There are quite a bit of people online that does that. Some charge as low as 5,000 per month, some as high as 50,000 per month, depending on the need that you have. But ultimately, I'll recommend that you um, know how to do these things yourself. Just in case the person decides to disappear one day, you will not be, you know, yeah, left, left hanging on a thin rope. And then just about the ensure that, okay, but I guess because we, we don't have so much time, you know, but about abuse on virtual, the office space, working space option. And then I think after that, just quickly, you now just tell us, because people are now asking, about these applications, and we use that last thing to round up. About the applications, how do they get about knowing more about the applications? So this is where you now talk about the Facebook boost, your business program, because somebody oh, okay. asked about it. When is the next Facebook boost your business oh, okay. program? Okay, all right, but the first one you asked was about, I just So she gave you, for the flexibility, how do you protect business from the flexible working hours? Okay, virtual? flexible working hours, oh, fine, fantastic. Well, um, I think the way I would explain it is first, before you even hire people, you need to hire right. So if you're going to hire people, you are looking at the kind of roles you want to put them in because not all po um, roles would um, require flexible working. So there are some roles in your organizations that you need people to come in regularly. But in terms of abuse, there's a limit to it because, see, we live in a digital world. The truth of the matter is depending on where you are at this point and the kind of business you run, you cannot ignore it. The best thing we'll say is that hire the right people first. Ensure that your company culture is very important. You must have said these things when you hire them to let them know that this is how you work over time. And you can put in some checks and balances as well. So if, for example, now we look at situations whereby results are what we require. So if you can deliver within the set time and set period, that's fine. But in terms of when you say abuse, now abuse is now subject to what your own organization does terms as abuse. So if somebody doesn't come to work but they meet their results at that point in time, as long as they do that, some organizations will take that. 
So the best things you can do is, I'll say hire right, just to save time. Train your people well. Train them regularly. When you train them on how you want your own company culture to be like, have that discussion with them. Emphasize what your de their deliverables are. Once you emphasize their deliverables, then every other thing you will just live with it. There will be bad people that would abuse these things once in a while, but now your processes have to take care of how to manage them or not. But the most important thing is your mindset. If you're still thinking about that as well, we live in a world where people work remotely. And this mindset has to really be in tune with the kind of world we live in right now. So that's very important. And the other question is... So just tell us about Facebook for Business. Okay, so Facebook Boost Your Business. Um, we've talked about this. So Facebook Boost Your Business, I'm just going to explain, I mean, just quickly touch on how we're doing this in Nigeria. Of course... I okay, for typically we're looking at small and medium businesses. Uh, across Nigeria, different cities in Nigeria. So we'll share this information. You can go to our website, www.digivate360.com, and there's a link called Boost Your Business there where you can also register for this training. But just to give you an idea, it's sponsored directly by Facebook. It is free of charge, and um, it's about four to six hours. It's a practical session. We'll share tools, not just talk about all this. We'll share information with you that would help you have practical things that you can use to help you grow your business in terms of marketing and sales as well. So go to the website, www.digivate360.com, and you look for the Boost Your Business link. Across different cities in Nigeria, we're doing this as well. So we'll have time to share more information about that. So thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, panel. Thank you, audience.